Hello, internet friends. My name is Bay, and welcome back to a Bay Talks About. This is going to be the Sarafang cinematic old soldier that just popped up last night. I was streaming. We talked about it for a little bit. We watched it live on stream. And again, I'm doing this sort of in the Sylvanas style, where I've already watched this a few times beforehand, looked through a whole bunch of stuff, sort of pulled up a whole bunch of notes that I want to talk about, I guess. And we're going to go through sort of a nerdy film cinematic analysis breakdown. There'll be a little bit of story bits here and there, but the overall in this one is that I think there's a little less story to like jibber jab about than the Sylvanas one, because I think we all sort of know what's happening here. So I want to sort of compare and contrast and tie the, you know, the, uh, the narrative points that I'm seeing between different parts of this one overall because it's real good <laughs> it's uh it's really really good and let me turn off closed captioning here i'm kind of like gorilla editing this as i go live i'm not doing like a rendered thought out you know scripted thing here so a lot of it is right off the cuff if you want to watch the sylvanas or the jaina breakdowns as well they're right here on the channel so you can go check those out i'll probably i card the sylvanas one if you want to go back to that one as well but uh, even regardless of everything I talk about in this, there's still more things we're slowly figuring out and, and piece, piecing apart here. So I'm not going to watch the entire six minutes of this in this video. So I implore you, go watch it yourself and come back. This is not the way to watch this. I'm not going to do like a live reaction one in this video. I'm going to go sort of scene by scene or almost shot by shot or moment to moment and just break down and connect some pieces around here. But... The first thing I wanted to talk about in the video was sort of who Varrock Seraphang is because the gravity of his character is just ridiculous. So I was trying to look for like, well, how do I summarize who this character is? Or other than how an absolute unmitigated badass he is. And the first thing that came to mind is that I'm just going to go get some notes off Wowpedia. But Wowpedia, the top note, <clears throat> just has like his little blurb, which I think summarizes him rather aptly. So High Overlord Varrock Sarafang is a renowned orc warrior of the Blackrock clan and a famed veteran of the first, second, and third wars. He served as Orgrim Doomhammer second in command during the second war and the supreme commander of the combined might of Kalimdor. The might of Kalimdor was the gates of Ankaraj unified alliance and horde strike force against the old gods and the Karaji. So he rallied the armies against the Karaji and the Ankaraj and Silithus. He later led the Korkron against the Scourge in Northrend. And then he also assisted Thrall during the siege of Orgrimmar. He has been along for a very long time, been alive for way longer than most orcs usually live. And it's probably one of the last remaining really honorable orcs, which is the whole point of what we talk about here. So this is just, he has so much weight behind his character that, I don't know, the, the opening of this, let's start breaking stuff down because there's so much to go over here that it's just unbelievable. So the first opening bits of this are three shots that are setting up the tone for the short film. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to understand this is not, this is titled a cinematic, but this is basically in a narrative sense, this is a short film. It's a self-contained, it actually has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It has a rising action, a falling action, a climax, all this stuff, right? And short form narrative storytelling Outside of the 2.5D cinematics, I would say, like, the sea shanty is a song, right? There's a narrative in there for Jaina, but it's it's a song. It's like a music video. And the Sylvanas is, I think, less a short film and more of, like, a narrative piece of a much larger story. This is congruent in itself because it has moments that tie it to the main story and bring it back. So the opening shot, of course, is Draenosh with Saurfang. That's his son. That's after the ICC encounter. And Russ Peterson on Twitter actually brought this up, but I wanted to make sure I preface this at the beginning of the video, is that the actual quote 
from this scene in ICC is that High Overlord Sarfang weeps over the corpse of his son. He says, You will have a proper ceremony in the Grand next to the pyres of your mother and ancestors. Honor, young heroes, no matter how dire the battle, never forsake it. Honor, comma, young heroes. And that's narrative from this is years ago. Basically when the storytelling in World of Warcraft ramped up. So it's honor young heroes, but also honor and speaking to us young heroes. Like there's a double point of notion there. And that's like the whole antithesis of everything. It's like his whole magnum opus about his character is honor. So this is his son, which is weird in the canonical sense because this apparently happens after ICC when he takes his body down, but I guess he just goes right down to somewhere to just talk to him, but he still brings it back to the Grand. So... <laughs> this scene, which is the teaser point to the burning of Teldrassil, and then the sort of the hero shot, so this would be called the hero's close-up or whatever, the still frame of, of course, just Sarfang himself which is really good. Everyone always talks about how Blizzard really needs to make their own cinematics. There is so much detail in these, even compressed to 1080p, right? 1080p uh, on YouTube that you can see how much their CGI has improved and keeps moving forward. There was comments on Twitter. I was talking about how like there's some real industrial light and magic going on here. And the amount of CGI fine detail. I mean, just look at the, the worn on his collar here. And there's the scene with the ashes that I'll stop on that is just ridiculous. However, some of you may think this kind of stuff is on the nose. This scene right here actually is in the present or in the present of this short film. Because obviously this is a flashback. He's remembering. And then he is also remembering again. Where's the, the short scene where the tree burns? It's very few frames right here. And then he sees Sylvanas and then it goes right to his face. This is the first scene of bringing us into the actual narrative where he's standing by the fire. The weird thing about this is that, and again, on the nose bits, or you might not believe me with cinematic grammar and how, how storytelling happens and how film narratives put together. So many of these little things I'm going to talk about are conscious decisions. They have to be because you are telling lots of things in a very short amount of time. There is no doubt in my mind that the fact that this shot is lightly lit on purpose by this pyre only a little bit to the glint in this eye and the rest of Sarafang's face is very shadowed. Even to the point where this middle piece of his collar is both light and dark. These are conscious directorial decisions. Where the lighting source will come from, what light and the motivation for the character in the shot, what is motivating the light. All these little things are all important. Additionally... You will then see soon that he takes off his right shoulder pad, takes off both, and his collar, but now in the canonical sense of Sarafag, in-game, and in the cinematic toward the end, and in the BFA launch cinematic, I'll bring that up here in a little bit, his right shoulder remains off. His right shoulder is also the shoulder that is lit, that is, you know, lit aflame by this brazier, right? Not like the meme lit, don't be stupid. <laughs> so lit. Um, <clears throat> this is... I saw this in the breakdown when I was setting this up right now. I didn't realize this at first. This shoulder he takes off and never puts back on. That is the present, right? Usually the present is the the forward, the the brightly lit, the present part of what a character can see, and things that are shadowed or darkened are in the past. So his other part of his character, his left shoulder pad, which is shadowed in this frame, he actually has on. So, be that what it will, I thought that was a neat little touch. So this is an on-beat edit here.
Uh, on beat edits are usually like music video y, but I get it, right? I totally get it. This is the morning before the Battle for Lord Iran. People were theorizing that this was actually supposed to come out on like Sunday or Monday. Apparently, the China Joy big deal just happened, and this was released there first. So, in the Asian countries, then it was also released for us, of course, at the same time. This was obviously not something we knew about. I thought my next discussion video would be about the Jara short, which is still going to happen. But this is obviously the motivated shot. This is what we saw right here. This shot of his close-up is the same shot on the ramparts right here. Just the camera, instead of being pulled back at a wide, is in front of him as, as, as a ultra close-up. And this is the, the the little pyre right here that that uh, our our real character is about to light in a moment. But it's dawn of this battle of Lordaeron. This actually happens upcoming on the Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on when you watch this. It's the next reset in game, and this there's a bit weird part of me that that likes and doesn't like how parts of narratives sort of push this style which it's all just mumbo jumbo in the cinematic grammar sense right so again the back half of the frame is very dark and shadowed but obviously the oncoming dawn in the future that usually dawn or the sun rising or the scene changing in this regard being a huge point of lighting leads to a mood change or a resolution change or a motivation change is how this works, right? The dawning of a new age or dawning of a new day, right? A blood moon rises, right? All this kind of stuff. Like those, those pivotal lunar and solar things always play into cinematics as like a big deal, okay? And that's no exception here. This is what this whole point is. So he's taking off his right shoulder pad. And again, he's obviously motivationally lit. He's only this shoulder is lit. The rest of it, obviously, look like a horn here, whatever that sticks out. But the rest of him is very shadowed. We see the huge army on the horizon here. A question that came up about how long would it take Blizzard to make their own cinematic movie like this? And I estimate like three to four years. This short actually probably took less time than the actual shorter BFA intro cinematic. That's because that intro cinematic has so many moving players. There's very few moving players here. This huge Vista shot is incredibly low res in comparison. And even though there's a lot of like moving pieces, they're obviously not key pieces or hero figures like we do have with our two main characters in this piece. But I would think Blizzard would probably take about three or four years to make an actual cinematic themselves. But enter the best boy. Oh. I honestly wonder, <clears throat> I really, really do, if this short was made in the earlier part of this year. I don't think it was, but I really want to know if it was um, from a cinematic standpoint, because I think this character, this troll, which apparently his name is Zakan, but I'm not totally sure. We just call him Zappy Boy. If you know what his actual real name is, I don't think he's been canonically named yet. If we're going to be some character, I don't think he's anything besides the guy in the cinematics, right? Is, uh, I, I don't know if he actually has a real name, but he, his character, I think, I wonder if this was a different character. If this was like an orc or a, a random forsaken or something like that, because they're in Undercity, right? They're on the ramparts of Lordaeron. I wonder if they redid this part or made this cinematic with the fans' reaction involved because of the community's love of Zappy Boy. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Lord Sarfang. Narrative hook here. Obviously, Sarfang ignores him because he has his mindset. He's thinking about his son, thinking about Sylvanas, thinking about the weight of the past, all this kind of stuff. The fire is dim. We're going to see Zappy Boy light the fire here. He walks into it. You know how much more lit and exuberant he is? He's the new character. He just walks in. Lighting the fire right here, which is actually some frame by frame. I love to like download this footage and frame by frame these sequences sometimes. Because I don't know why he used lightning instead of a fire spell as a shaman, which as a shaman player myself, I'm just like, just flame shock it, my dude. Lightning looks cool, though. But that's the whole, again, literally it's Zappy Boy. So... The lighting of the fire here, 
There is, you can see the little lightning trail there, but uh, <sighs> narratively again, he is the new light, the spark of, of different hope in Saurfang himself. By lighting the fire, by talking to him, by even approaching him in the first place, that is a huge step towards the character development, not only with Saurfang, but also with, with our, our troll good boy here. And not only, you don't hear, right now, as the camera perspective shifts now, and because our key focus and the focus of the camera is actually on Zappy Boy here, not only then do we hear, like, troll ears, I guess, that's when we actually hear any of the Alliance background. Because up to this point, there's no Alliance noise in the background. You don't hear anything. It's just, like, dead ambience in the morning. But you start hearing the actual noise... Because our perspective shift is on Zappy Boy now. We're we're experiencing his emotional shift. How many do you think? Too many. There is a double or triple or quadruple meaning to this statement as well. Obviously, our 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 troll good boy is talking about how many of these are out there on the alliance side, right? Sarafang's too many response is not straight up flatly a response to how many are present on the battlefield. Just, there's so many too many's for him. In a way, I think he's responding with too many battles because he's a very old orc. One of his old quotes is that if you, like, if you can, don't grow old or don't grow old if you can because of all the stuff that weighs down upon you over time. Like this, for example. There's a Foley note I want to bring up here, or like a, uh, <clears throat> a how audio design is, is done. I don't know how they did the screams. Many people have commented on the screams of the Night Elves at the Burning of Teledrassil. Too many. But too many can also mean how many innocents died just recently because of this. Sometimes you actually record individual voices screaming and then mix them all together in tons of different layers. Or you actually mix small groups of people to get different actual, like, ambiences and different, like, you have multiple microphones, but you have different distances on different people in, like, one recording space that are all doing the screams. I don't know how they did this because there, there's not a lot, but there's very key balance between different scream pitches and of course this reveals the sylvanas scene i don't think it's weird how the cinematic description of teldrassil is nothing like the actual in-game teldrassil it's very strange because how do you live in this tree it doesn't look that large in comparison to what it actually is in game but again i think i talked about this in the sylvanas short when her hand, her right hand, is similarly posed where she kind of looks like she's aghast at what she has done. Both in her, I did it, okay, right? And then also how she's kind of like, whenever you get surprised by something, your natural human reaction is kind of, you pull back. If you look at how her back and her shoulders are arched backwards, again, conscious decisions of, of trying to show emotion through not saying it or explicitly verbally right her her shoulders are back so she's kind of like oh but there was her face however on that short frame there shows something very different that she actually enjoys this which is kind of a mixed emotion there was yeah but I, I i don't know i don't know what her emotion's supposed to be which is the whole point right there is no honor in this they will come for us now all of them the cut between a narrative line of all of them signifying how much, you know, what's on the horizon there. Obviously, how big of a ridiculous amount of alliance will then storm Lorder on. Cuts to showing the all of them, right? It's a narrative one to two. Hmm. 
Then again, see, we're back to Sarafang. We lose the ambience of the Alliance in the background as we go back to his perspective. My father, Hikazi. He fought with you in the Third War. He told me stories. How you could cut down ten enemies with a single blow. Notice, too, obviously he's an old man. He's very tedious with his, or very meticulous is a better word for what he's doing with taking off his armor. But in particular, it shows that his first shoulder pad he lets down. That's the honor shoulder pad, right? There's no honor here anymore. His neck brace, you see how gingerly he places it down? It doesn't need to be gingerly placed down, right? It's just like pure orc metal. But it's like, it's all of this remembrance and all these like little bits of emotion that are showing through his actions, physically being depicted in that regard. So, and again, forward ground, very shadowy character, not a lot of light on Sarafang. This be my first battle. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> Don't die. Yes, of course. But <laughs> if I do fall, may it be with honor in glorious color. <laughs> See, the second shoulder, the no honor shoulder, right? or the last remnants of it, that's what he throws down in anger to this line about honor. There will be no glory today. Sarfang steps into the pyre in this scene, almost fully illuminating his body after he removes all of his armor. Not before, not during, only after, and then he removes his son's necklace. Only pain. This, this ash sequence is so ridiculous though. And the D, again, I would love to get non, or uncompressed, non-YouTube footage. Because look at the, the, the actual binding on the leather, on the strapping on this necklace. It is actually so ridiculous to me how, here, hold on. Let me grab a screen grab actually live right here. Cause I want to see this myself. I got to make this larger on my screen here because there's something you cannot, <sighs> this is all by the artists and this shot isn't very long. But this shows you the depth that the cinematics team is taking to show how real, I mean, in some ways, the uh, the CGI in the Blizzard standalones is on par with what happened in the Warcraft film. A triple A big giant budget, multi-million dollar block office movie. A block, block, block office? Box office. Blockbuster. There's so much detail just in the freaking cloth. This is all has to be textured and and wrapped. Oh my, I can't even. Again, this sequence, I'm not sure. Again, look at like look at the snow in just all the little detail in this frame. There's so much, I mean, again, going back to the Warcraft movie for just a moment, the best part of the Warcraft film was all the orcs. Not a Horde player, I'm just a Warcraft enjoyer. I love the game, I've been playing it since it was on MS-DOS, right? It's been part of like, a third of my existence on this mortal coil has been this freaking universe, this game. The, <laughs> the amount of detail in orcs to me always blows me away because they're obviously a very done fantasy trope, this character, this race, but I mean, the way that Blizzard and World of Warcraft have done orcs is just there's so much that has to be expressed in such a crazy face. Like, look at this. So, I don't know. It, there's, there's so much detail here. It's ridiculous. But this is his saying goodbye to his son because he just took off the necklace again. Earlier he was remembering the scene, but until he actually takes the necklace off, we bounce to the, the B-roll story here, the B-story in his head. That is when he is burning his son's necklace because he doesn't feel there's any honor anymore because he's lived too long, he's seen too many things continuously stack up and stack up and stack up. So, there's a bit, uh, Perculia actually put this on 
on Twitter, actually. There's an excerpt from the Collector's Edition World of Warcraft Story of Good War that is also uh, sort of paralleling older Sarafang with his son, which we see with right here, and then now. So at the start of the cinematic, as well as in a good war, good war is the book that comes with the collector's edition. Sarafang thinks about his dead son, this cinematic here, uh, that was killed during the Wrathgate and later turned to a death knight by Arthas. So the excerpt here reads that he touched a burning torch to the pyre. Orange flames began to spread first in kindling and then in the chopped wooden logs. Shimmers of blue and white danced among the flames as the fire grew hotter. He made himself watch the flames, he being Sarfang, Varrock. He watched the flames consume his son. It was his boy's final honor. He would not turn away. He watched skin give way to muscle, to bone, and finally to ash. Varrock Sarfang woke up. The silence in his quarters was undisturbed, but for his breathing, his cheeks were wet again, he noticed. So that's before this, right? That's back in Wrath of the Lich King. At the end of a good war, this is what happens at the end of the Burning of Teldrassil in the, the book we're going to get in the CE. Sarfang forces himself to also watch the tree burn, paralleling his son's funeral pyre and the respect earned by the fallen. So the too many quote again earlier. So the, the bit from the book is that Sarfang made himself watch the flames consume the city and citizens alike. He would not dishonor himself further by turning away. So, and then this, of course, this plays out now in the remembrance here. The snow in this shot, just the detail is, damn it, Blizzard. Denote the orc. I don't know. Somebody in the comments let me know. Is there something about orc culture or is it just a Sarafang thing? They do like the, it's the fist down and the fist this way on his chest, right? So it's like this and then like this. I can't do it to myself because the it's fist is the wrong angle, but it's the, the butt of your hand down. Whoops. The butt of your hand down and then the fingers open palm of your hand down. Because he does that later on in this short as well. But this is... I like how you can tell age of orcs by their tusks. Like, look how much shorter Dranoshes are than Varrocks. People told me in chat the other day that Varrock is like 80 plus years old for an orc, and most orcs are like 40 to 50 in human years, between like late 30s and early 50s, when they usually think that's like an honorable death and they want to die by then. Kind of, I don't know, it's just like their, their culture. But look at the snow in his hair! Yet once again, I am denied it. The animation on these ashes. Just appreciate this. Even in a compressed, maxed bitrate YouTube video. I, I don't even know. If any of you have done any particle effects or are 3D animators and can appreciate this beyond the fact of when it looks cool, <laughs> there's something going on there. I don't know. I'm an editor by trade. I have no idea how long this stuff actually takes to render due to the fact that like, technology is so far ahead and like render farms or whatever, right? So I don't know. Each of these individual shots, that one shot right here, this fire sequence and grabbing of the ashes, and all the physics interacting with the hand rolling off the different parts of like his cuticle and his finger and his and his wrapping around the in I, <laughs> it's just actually ridiculous to think about but what are you doing claiming what is mine so this connects now with with what I was actually kind of sad about when I was figuring this out and putting this video together is that uh, 
the in-game team didn't sort of parallel this well enough. They didn't have, like, multiple Sarafang models. Because in the actual game, this is his, his model looks like this. Right? Like, this is Sarafang in-game. He already has the ashes from the pyre on his face. This is during the War of Thorns campaign. So this isn't... Like, they didn't do two different models, because also he has the one shoulder off. This is before this whole sequence happens, because this is before the tree burns kind of a deal. But I, it would have been nice if they had, like, a before and then after model, then without the, the ashes on his face, and then a model with, with later on. That would have been neat, but that's not the case, though, unfortunately. Even on the battle for Lordaeron we're about to get on Tuesday... Where Sarfang, you know, talks to Sylvanas again, he still has the model that it, it's just the in game. So keep that in mind for continuity's sake. There's no script supervisor for this kind of stuff, but um, this this one is from PTR. There, he still only has the one shoulder or the one, you know, no honor shoulder off, and he still has the. You can barely see the um, the ash on his face right here. It's already there, which it you know it should be here. I think, depending on the continuity, this is also, but that doesn't really matter. Just so you know that the, where the steps in this go is sort of in a different order than it's, you know, than we see. Because in-game, it can't always translate. The cut to black here is actually pretty bold, because from a narrative standpoint, we have a much more brightly lit again this shoulder is always forward in in the uh the reverse once he starts stepping into the light they chose to put the camera there on purpose but then we cut to black here Blaming what is mine which is a total scene change we even have a light sting behind the scene there and now of course he's carrying his own torch the, the torch walk sequence here is sort of like a hero's last stand, their last final moment. I was trying to think of it if they were putting any more narrative here in this shot when they actually have his hand slowly coming down. Which could be two things, or three things, I guess. One is like he's just, he sees what he needs to see, he's accepting his phase and walk through the Alliance and take out as many as he can, then die, right? Which is not very honorable, because he's just not, I don't know if it's that very honorable to just do that by yourself and you're not, like, on the even playing field or whatever, you're trying to, like, ambush the... The Alliance forces will see him coming. Or that he's feeling regret for walking out here, and he's actually feeling bad for himself, and the slow descending of the torch is that he's, like, almost giving up in a way. Because obviously holding a torch above your head is, like, a symbol of power. It's like, you know, your fist is up, your hand is up, you're holding the light above your head. Pulling it down is a bit of, like, a, a slow descent kind of a bit. Or he can hear the footsteps of Zappy Boy behind him and he's getting frustrated that he's actually getting followed out here when this was supposed to be his moment. So again, lots of little narrative hooks that could be a thing. I don't know which one they wanted to translate, but there's a few going on there. Because he slows down toward like the right at the end when he catches up with him. Go back. Obviously tells him to go away. He doesn't want him here. Zappy Boy tries to like... You know, do the younger kid copying a uh, his father or copying a, a father figure, which we find out shortly why he's doing this. He's trying to feel like he's ex he's trying to get acceptance from Sarfang, right? He's looked up to this guy in a way of like a superhero or like a, a distant you know war hero in this sense for the horde, and takes off his shoulder pads. Again, getting to it's always it's it's this shoulder. See, the right one comes off first for Sarafang. The left one is the one he throws down. Zappy Boy's right one comes off, no problem. He's starting to get to the left one. That's when he gets interrupted. So the whole like no, no shoulder pad movement happening right now on Twitter and Reddit. If you're gonna take part in that as a as a horde player, it has a lot of depth. I would say. Go back. Live another day. And that's the key line here, live another day, that gets thrown around in the overall narrative here. Even though Sarfang doesn't really heed his own words, because living another day for him is keeps adding more and more and more pain to this process for him. Go back to your father. I can't. He's dead. This, I have to stop, and you might have to watch this yourself and like frame by frame this. 
watch Sarafang's face when he realizes this young man, this young troll's father is dead, and they have a reverse synergy. Obviously, no parent should ever outlive their child. That's what Sarafang has endured. And then, in most cases, usually children see live to see their parents pass on. That's sort of how the dichotomy of growing older works, having young and, you know, your legacy moving forward or whatever, your offspring, this kind of stuff. Sarafang's overall emotion right when Zappy Boy says this is so quick before the scene cuts, but you watch what happens. He's dead. The Horde. See, he goes back to the frown, like, right there, but there's a couple... It's like a second and a half of like actual like oh the horde like a sad father it's all we have and he immediately he gets like the awakened face to the horde but then again he goes right back to being grumpy so you know me is that it and again he thinks he's being presumed that someone else can figure him out so quickly kind of a deal that's sort of an old person film, you know, TV storytelling trope where old people with all of their wisdom don't think that the youth can ever understand them. That obviously plays out right here in this scene. So, and then because of the situation have here, again, you know, no armor, no anything like that. You can obviously see all the emotion here. What? He throws the torch down. So Sarafang is now back in the no lighting source again. Very, very narrative. You hear the torch at the ground. He drops it. So we're back into the totally, you know, dimly lit, shadowy, only lit on the right side. I've seen what I've done. Ah. Ah. Poor Zappy boy. Don't give up, boy. Like you? Ah. So... Not only does that take some actual cojones <laughs> to say that to Varrock Sarafang, this is the one part that I saw in some Twitter discussions that people were, were kind of off put by this line, or at least by how eager our troll buddy here is wanting to go to war and wants to battle and his wants his first battle. He's like, is overly eager. But I think, again, short story plot device that has to happen that he, the youth is basically challenging the old in this regard. It's what I, that's what I gather, right? He is challenging not only his personal honor and his understanding and his stake in this and his story, but he's challenging Sarafang's and why he's, he's like, he's just giving up. It's bad right now. Obviously, we don't know what his stance on what the war chief has done, what Sylvanas has done, but this is where they're at. The war horn sound of the ramparts. The horde flag comes up. We're at. This is weird to me because I don't think the ramparts are that deep. You wouldn't see a forsaken on the, you know, on the tower. I think it's on purpose. It's a budgetary thing. They didn't want to put more player characters in this. They wouldn't want more, you know, more characters to animate. So they're kind of like the torches and stuff. Just I just noticed that kind of stuff, like a script supervisor kind of thing. The sun is obviously rising now. The shift in tone I talked about like 15, 20 minutes ago about how this sort of is used as a narrative device to show a mood change, a shifting of gears. This is usually between lighting, motivation, or camera change. <sighs> Notice the water lines now. There is a bit of a, a water line. The eyes in our characters now can be more brightly uh, reflecting of either emotion now in this case because the sun's come up and just because there's like tears catching in both of their eyes the emotion comes up it comes up in Zappy Boy and then it comes up in Sarafang he took his son's pendant out of the fire this sound in the background is a different tone in the score that is tied to the wrath stuff from earlier if you go back to and listen to this There's much more strings happening there. So when this happens, live. Wait, whoops. Mm. 
live another day. That face is so good. That's like when you tell something to your grandparents that makes them remember like who they are or what they've been through or thanking them if they've been in the service or anyone in that regard. Like that face is so good. It's an acceptance face, remembering he tugs like lovingly on his uh his armor chest piece there instead of like pushing him earlier. That little tug there is neat. Like he does the fist down and then fingers down. The smile is really fast there if you check that. It's the old man understanding that maybe there's a little bit more to going on right now and that there are members of the Horde that do feel the same way that Sarafang does. There's a bit in the actual book that I was told that uh, Sylvanas is very scared of what her decision could do and has done in this regard. That she could lose Sarafang as a supporter for her cause and he'd be a very difficult enemy, which... No spoilers, but once we get into BFA in the week and a half from now, you'll there's something still to be told. The cannons of the Alliance lighting up. The eyebrow raise here is cheeky. It's the first like little hint of playful emotion from Sarafang. The pat on the shoulder, and then of course the joke. Without armor. So he says, I'll put on closed caption again. This actually tricked me up. I thought he said without honor, which I thought was poignant, but also didn't make sense. He says without armor. Without armor. And that's like a genuine, you can see the water line again in Zappy Boy here now. So obviously the without armor is just a joke because they were taking off their armor and they're about to go to war. So continuity wise as well, I think this is actually pretty neat. Uh, this is the gate that they walk out of. And this section of wall behind Sarafang, I'll bring over the launch trailer real quick. To show, this is the launch trailer, right? It's like the door is over here. So it's actually, he's actually in like roughly the same, the door is right here where the torrent is and it pans past. So this is just the part of the section of the wall that is from the same thing. So again, script supervising, he gets enough time to put on his one, his left shoulder pad and his, his neck helmet brace thing. Doesn't put the necklace back on though. There's no necklace to be seen. So people are wondering where the necklace went, but that is not to be seen there. So. I wish I could get some actually rendered stills because you cannot, you can't get stills from the compressed version. It's going to be so blurry and messed up. But that is where the end of this takes us. And obviously, this is going to be a longer review than the other. So, so slow here. I would love this shot. There's no way to get that shot without a, a rendered piece from Blizzard. There's no way. But. And then in this final sequence here. You'll notice that Sarafang is almost completely brightly illuminated by the sun instead of having the shadowy motif the entire time showing a resolve in the motivation not only the lighting of the character but also illuminating his entire uh, person basically. Except a little bit, this is because the sun motivation is like off camera, you know, right, uh, character left. But um, the shoulder pad he doesn't put back on is now darkened, but that's like a tiny thing. Man, I wish I could pause it right there, but I can't. Other little things I wanted to clear up that we talked about where people were wondering if um, the troll that Anduin crushes is Zappy Boy. That is actually not the case. So if we go to the actual launch cinematic, for continuity purposes, this is Zappy Boy actually hits Greymane. Um, he's right over here off frame. 
This is a blue haired troll. So this is not, you can tell a blue hair during the shot. So this is not, not our friendly neighborhood zappy troll. And then in the final shot, when they run off together, let me go to that. He's right here. So he does not perish. If you do also notice very quickly, which I don't know if this was on purpose or not, he doesn't get his his armor back on. He gets, yeah, he doesn't get, you can't really tell. I'm pretty sure he only has his uh, left shoulder on because you can sort of see bits and pieces hanging off of this one, but not his right. Not sure if that's intentional or not, or different models during the different processes of building these. But if it actually is a conscious decision that he only has his left shoulder on and so does Varrock, that's pretty awesome. But hard to tell, because hard to tell, it's very, very quickly. I think in this frame you can't see. I think it's just his, his armor pieces on his forearm. But again, he is alive and well, if you were curious. He is alive and well, no big deal. Again, yeah, there's the hide the shoulders movement happening right now on Twitter. Hide the shoulders if you support Sourfang. We must hide our shoulders until the horde regains its honor. It'd be a while, but I'm down. And I'm honestly down for making this movement. Losing fashion points for the cause. There is no higher sacrifice. I think that's really, really funny. But uh, oh, there is just a lot of subtle imagery here and connecting points and some really fantastic storytelling not only from the the sound design team, the lighting, the motivation of where the cameras go and the directing. I also didn't bring up the fact that in this scene, again, I with character movement usually determines and shows off uh, change in a character's motivation or their feelings about it. So Varrock is sort of center frame now. Whereas all the other shots in this entire thing, he is very much subdued and on the right frame a lot of the times. Very, very often he's on the right. He pans in this shot, obviously, but he goes back to the right of frame again. He is on the right of frame, the right of frame. In the flashbacks, that doesn't matter because it's a different story. Right of frame, right of frame, right of frame. All this stuff to keep him there at the very end when he is center frame now even there if you, if you can cut the frame in half he's like left center in in film terms there is there's left center and right and then there's left center and then right center for like placing things in the frame for the overall balance right balancing out sarfang in this shot is the horde flag up here because if the horde flag wasn't there it would be really empty with just the sky so and then of course the first cannonball hit hits over here to draw your eye this way all this stuff is all intentional there's no way it's not intentional they have to think of all these little things they have to put this all together because these are incredibly in-depth pieces of visual storytelling and the narrative here has to be put together but i i don't know this this stuff to me is what i really like I really enjoy this kind of stuff, figuring all this bits out and as how the narrative evolves over the course and how they may have done this. I would, I don't know if there's any, this is a, a still shot of the end of the burning scene. This sequence, this shot with Sylvanas is such wallpaper material. Can we get a high res like 4k version of this blizzard, please? It's so ridiculous, even though it's, it's. It's gut-wrenching what's happening here. Visually, it's still a really... If you agree with her or not, it's still a crazy storytelling point. You cannot argue with me on that one. But that's about all I have, though. It's been about 50 minutes of me going through all this stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed my walkthrough, sort of scene-by-scene -scene analysis here in this one. Different than Sylvanas. So, and I don't know what the Ajara short will bring, but uh, there's a lot... A lot of stuff that was visually told. The sound was awesome. All the little bits and pieces here. I still wonder if this character was created because of the community, because of us. I really wonder about that sometimes. I would love some BTS stuff, but all the BTS stuff has been packed up and made for the collector's edition for forever ago. But I would, I would definitely like to do this. Hopefully I can maybe get a, a dev or blue interview in this regard and talk to the people behind making some of these things on my show in the future. 
if you would like a show where I interview the cinematics team or people from the cinematics team, uh, that would be awesome for me to do, to combine my two passions for the gaming side of things and, of course, the film side of things, as I do have a, a bachelor's in film, been working in the industry for four years before I became a broadcaster, so this has been a lot of fun to break this kind of stuff down. Really interesting stuff. Even in this shot, going back through again, the Horde flag is lit up, but then it barely casts a lot of light on the parts of Lordaeron before it cuts to make sure you see the Horde flag as the main key part here. So many things, so many things. But thank you all for watching. Check out the Sylvanas review if you uh, enjoyed this one. The Jaina review uh, breakdown one reaction was a live take from my live stream. A little bit different for that one, but they're both here on the YouTube channel. Look forward to the Ajara one in the future, and of course, anything else that I put together. But uh, thank you very much for listening and watching. I didn't plug it in the last one, but this shirt is the new one launched by Fabelina. This is the Battle Azerite Day shirt. You can get this with or without text, customizable in whatever color you would like on my Design by Humans page. It's linked down below. I wore the Horde red version today. I wore the, uh, the blue one in the Sylvanas one the other day, just because I'm wearing them during these recordings, I guess. But check that out if you'd like. I'm going to stop babbling now and get this on YouTube so you can actually watch it. But thank you all very much for listening. And I'll check you out on the live stream, hit up on Twitter, all the socials linked down below. And uh, we'll wait for the Ajara one next. What's that going to be? <laughs>